This is Twit. Hey, I'm really excited about this. I, 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 I read the news story that Mercedes, in their navigation system, you know, typically a navigation system, you uh, you enter in an address. Right. Although there are many places in the world, Venice, Italy, for instance, there's no addresses. You go there, it's, a, yeah, it's the house on the left after the fire hydrant over by the gondola. You don't, so I don't, it must be the worst thing in the world to be a mailman in Venice. It's pretty bad, actually. It, it, you know you, about what, this? Oh, yeah. Well, yes, even in Rome, it's not... It's Easy. crazy, I bet. You give someone an address, and they'll look at it, and they're like, I don't really know where that is. I can get you close. <laughs> I'm like, well, how does that work? So the other way to do it that's exactly right is with the GPS system, uses, right. which is longitude and, and latitude. And every point on the planet can be, you know, uh, located with longitude and latitude. But go ahead and try to remember 40 I don't, minutes. I don't remember that. For, you know, three no, seconds. For, that's crazy. So uh, Chris Sheldrick came up with... A better way. Every every ten foot square, three meters square on the planet, every one can map to three words. I want to hear how this is done. The site is called whatthreewords.com, and the reason Mercedes is in is they're putting it in their navigation system. Joining us right now, co-founder and CEO of What Three Words, from I take it from the UK, Chris Sheldrick. Hi, Chris. Hi there. Yes, from the UK, but currently uh, in Vegas at CES. Ah. Okay, so uh, in fact, uh, at CES, Mercedes kind of threw a little more money in the pot. Ten took ten percent stake in what three words? Congratulations! Thank you very much. No, it's good to have them on board. I love this idea, but you've been at this for how long? Uh, um, this is our fifth year now of what three words. So we, yeah, it started as a, an idea, and I guess uh, it's it's now a bit of an ecosystem. Was it like a kind of crazy? Uh, were you in the hot tub when you thought this up? What, what what's the story? <laughs> what's the genesis? Well. Basically, for 10 years, I worked in the, uh, in the music business, and my job was to get people like bands and production uh, companies to actually just arrive at the right loading entrance to a concert venue. Um, and, you know, we just did this every day, and people just used to get lost, call up, going, look, I've put the address into my GPS, and I'm by a tree and a lamppost, and I can't see anything. Um, <laughs> and it just annoyed me a lot. I tried to get people using longitude and latitude, as you say, and then people would then call and go, hang on, where's the degrees button on my phone? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, on one day, like a, a truck driver mixed up a four and a five, ended up an hour north of Rome in Italy, not oh, south of Rome. Not good. So I guess, yeah, not good. That was a stressful day. So um, basically, I just chatted it through with a friend of mine who's a mathematician. I was like, how do we compress like longitude and latitude into something which is so easy that it's like totally musician proof that no one's going to mess this up? And... Um, that's really how we had the idea. We were like, look, we just need to make something shorter. We can't remember 16 digits. Um, and people have tried this with an alphanumeric code, but they have to be like 9 or 10 characters. And that's a bit like trying to use a Wi-Fi password um, or the default Wi-Fi password, let's say. So our idea was if we just use words from the dictionary, like table, chair, spoon, and so on, and we just name every 10 foot by 10 foot square in the world, of which there are 57 trillion, um, we can do that, and we it's don't run out of word combinations. So literally, square number one is table chair spoon. Square number two is toffee branch pyramid, um, and so on and so on. And you literally cover from uh, the top of Alaska down to the bottom of New Zealand, and, uh, and there's enough. So if I say, look, come to my office at Index Home Raft, it's the only one in the world. No area code, no country code. I do notice, though, because they're 10-foot squares, that it's probably a good idea to pick the door to a place. Yeah. And, and what do you um, do about floors? Is there... <laughs> <laughs> so today we just do the whole thing in 2D. Like there's a hard enough time just getting people yeah. to the actual entrance of say, the building. You could say coffee, toffee, spoon, third floor. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, if you get them close enough, that, that's the thing. People are accustomed to an address which might get you somewhere close to where you're supposed to be, and then you just explore till you right. find it. Right. You, you just explained what I couldn't figure out, which is with that 10-foot square, you can say this window, this bush, sure. this door. My office has a different three words Precisely. that are front door. And oh, yeah. Now, how did you pick the words? First of all, how big is the vocabulary? Um, so we use 40,000 words um, in the English version. Now, that's a lot of words, but to be honest, we only need to use 25,000 words to cover the land on Earth. Um, so what happens is in, in somewhere like, I don't know, Las Vegas, where I am now, you might find table, chair, spoon, pretty simple words. Uh, and in the Antarctic, you might find dodecahedron hydraulics um <laughs> esoterically uh, or something um, i noticed that i noticed the word twit is in your vocabulary but it's in alaska ah. so. oh great okay so uh so that 
That's good. But yeah, so there's um, basically when people use it, it's probably going to be words they know is, yeah. is how we configure it. And, um, and, and do, you, do you look for words that people can visualize? Because that is one of the things that helps you remember this mm -hmm. is you can, um, it's a way of, it's actually a memory trick, isn't it? To, to, to kind of visualize it. Could you do that with this? We're glow, um, we're glow walnut nasal, by the way. Which, you know, naturally that okay. would be us. Yeah. So actually, you don't need to try too hard because if you're a glow will not nasal, what we probably do is put glows, plural, will not nasal, I don't know, in maybe Tokyo, Japan or something. So if you make a typo or you slightly misremember oh. it, um, the app's going to jump in and go, you probably didn't want to take an 82-hour ferry across the world. You probably meant glow will not nasal, which is near you. So actually, you can be a bit lazy, make some typos, um, and, and it'll help you. But yeah, there's no kind of rhyme or reason to where the words are. They will just appear random to you. That's smart, because if I did it, I would put it in a grid. I would say, glow is like longitude. It goes all the way down. Right. But that would, that would cause more errors, wouldn't it? People would get close, or, but, but maybe 100 miles north or south if there was a typo. That's exactly it. Yeah. So um, imagine my truck driver in Rome, he was actually driving from France that day, so he put in the latitude and longitude, and because he didn't know he'd made an error, because the place he tied in was still kind of near Rome, he just set off to the wrong place. So that's what made me think, hang on, let's not do it like that, even though it seems like the logical way, let's space out the similar ones so no one ever goes to smart. the wrong place. That's really smart. That's really, now, a question, this is perfect if you're trying to find something on a large campus, but now I'm starting to think of indoor space. I mean, we've, we've covered a lot of technologies on this network about How do you find locating your booth inside. at CES, right. for instance. So, so do you pair this with you know, beacons or indoor GPS? If I wanted to, to, to take this to the next logical step, which is to make it usable inside a space, how do I do that? Um, so you can certainly use it inside today. So at CES, which is this huge sort of exhibition hall, um, yeah, loads of my meetings, people said, hey, come and meet me at um, custard avocado um, bread. And we did. So and uh, we awesome. found that exact place. <laughs> that um, is so awesome. Well, it's because you tie into mapping programs, right? So, for instance, when I go to what3words.com and I type in glow walnut nasal, I can then send the result to Google Maps. Right. So you kind of you're letting Google Maps do the indoor mapping in effect, right? Exactly. We let the mapping and navigation platforms do the hard work. We are just this layer on top, which yeah. basically turns a three-word address into a latitude and longitude and back again. Um, and and so everyone else can do um, can look do the rest at, of it. Look at that. The Las Vegas Convention Center is Matt's icon models. <laughs> I love that. This would be so much easier than booth fifty-two five five three yes. Tech West. I, I, Seriously, I couldn't find anything. Cake this year, Danger so. Cheek, Coach Headed Third. <laughs> it's I, you don't do this on purpose, but it, sometimes images do form from all of these. Duck Admiral Bend. Yeah, I mean, but that's good, right? Like uh, people are smiling for the first time about addresses or coordinates, <laughs> yes. which have normally been this kind of real hassle to use. Um, I mean, isn't it great that you can just get into your Mercedes car and say, "Yeah, take me to to Duck Walnut." space and that's going to just navigate you to a 10 foot square somewhere um it's it's great like it just conjures up images or whatever it is but it's memorable and easy it's kind of the key my my wife who's very good at numbers she runs the business she's a, you know a numbers person says oh no no i don't like words i want to use numbers but for most of us words yeah. are a much more human and much more approachable way of 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 locating things i think yeah well i think that it, the difference is either 16 numbers, which is a lot, or, or <laughs> three right. words. I mean, I think in the U.S. here, like, uh, often, you know, you, you use this even in phone numbers, right? People are told to dial 1-800-PIZZA because a long number right. is just a bit more right. of a hassle. So right. I guess the, the concept is not new. We just looked at the size of the world and went, hey, this is quite convenient that we could do it in three words. If we'd have had to use four words, we probably wouldn't have done it because it's a bit harder. But, um, yeah, it's just very convenient. So for the first four and a half years... <laughs> <laughs> Did you feel a little bit like you were laboring in the, in the wilderness? Um, yeah, so to start with, when you kind of go to everyone and like, you know, investors and say, look, I've got a great idea. The future of navigation is getting into your car and saying cucumber, cabbage, lettuce. Um, <laughs> get them really odd looks back and they go, well, who's using this? And you're like, well, no one. Uh, and, um, but I guess, you know, things evolve, right? Um, I mean, one of our first government deals was, was the, the post service of Mongolia. You've got a country there... Uh, um, which is uh, the yeah, least densely sense. populated on earth. And sure enough, the postman can't find people in the middle of the desert. And they said, well, look, can you do this in the Mongolian language? We said, yes. And then we did a deal and people in Mongolia now use three Mongolian words to get their mail. So, um, wow. You know, so you, that's you get, almost become their official, that's their official location information. Oh yeah. If you turn up 
in Ulaanbaatar, the capital tomorrow, you'll be given a travel guide by your hotel um, with three words for everywhere no in it. Um, yeah, you can I use it in it. English and, uh, and you can get away. I mean, it, uh, get around. It's, um, it's amazing. But once you gather these all up, um, the UN have it in one of their apps. Uh, we use for disaster relief internationally. Um, there's a whole bunch of nav- navigation apps. Uh, um, that's what then gets people like Mercedes interested who go, look, this, this looks like it's the future. And do you know what? This is much easier than using a longitude and latitude. And I guess the car companies are also thinking, well, autonomous cars are coming. Yep. And then you've got no steering wheel, no pedals. So all those times when you put an address in and it kind of says you've arrived and actually you're in the middle of the road going, well, I haven't. So you, maybe you reverse a bit and find it. Well, you've got no steering wheel, no pedals. Can't do it. You can't do that. So everyone has to start thinking, how am I going to get people to exactly the right place? I mean, one is if drone delivery takes off. You can't just... Right. give an address which is your whole property like right. you need to say well it's this bit in my Land garden here. So, yeah 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 um, everyone needs to start you're thinking. an idea whose time has come this is going to be so do you feel like you're like the momentum like the train is starting to leave the station i mean this is pretty exciting um yeah the train's definitely left the station uh we we are we're kind of on a trajectory um and it, it is an interesting bit because we tell people about uh what we're doing and they're kind of like hang on mongolia mercedes uh, and people look at you like that this guy's either crazy or genius and maybe slightly unsure which. Um, and, um, and, I, and I guess, look, the, the more that we start to normalize this, because the first time you try it, it feels a bit weird and you might use it once to meet a friend and go, well, that was weird, but you know what, it worked. <laughs> and then the second and third time, it's like, actually, just let's use that again because it works and it becomes more normal. I ordered, so, you can go onto the people, site and, and order a sign with your three with words. Your location. Yeah. Are you oh, yeah. are you giving yeah, those fine. away? I don't understand that. Um, it depends what kind of sign you want. Um, so some of them we're doing um, as kind of promotional stuff, and some of them are really nice ones you can pay for. But um, yeah, go to the What Three Words site and have I a did. look around. There's signs. There's there's cool stuff. I ordered glow walnut wait, nasal. I'm going to hang. I'm going to hang in my new office. You, in the Vatican. Yeah, you should. Yeah. Yeah, the Vatican, by the way, is Lay's coherent snips. But what ten foot square? Oh is well, that? we don't know. Right. Yeah. That's we, the point. <laughs> is it the entrance? <laughs> Now, I understand how this is allowing some countries to bypass a more rudimentary logistical setup because now you're giving them the power of saying, okay, this is exactly where I want you to go. But my question to you is, so where do you grow this next? You've got the grid system. You've got some buy-in. You've got countries and companies both interested. So what happens to three words in 10 years? Um, Well, I think... What we want to be is a standard. We want to be yes. the norm. You want to so be that, open. You don't want to be any one company, right? I mean, um, I think um, as a company, we we have the ability to scale, yeah. right? Because people need to know about what three words. That's the key yeah. thing. How are people going to know about it? Right. Um, so when you see it on a business card and someone's got cucumber, cabbage, potato on there, um, that you're not looking at it that like, what is this? Um, it you know it becomes as familiar as the at symbol for Twitter, right? Um, and you know if someone is sort of outside a bar yelling, hey, just come and meet me at um, yeah, potato ceiling cut, but um, that that just feels entirely normal. Now to get there, yes, we need more and more countries um, to adopt this. We've uh, we've got some developing nation governments, and for many of these guys, you know, they've got two options. One is, oh, let's name every street because Ugh. a lot of these countries they haven't done, and it can take ten years, yeah. tens of millions of dollars. Or we say, well, look, here's something ready made. Um, it may well be in their uh, national language because we do fourteen languages and a load more coming. And we say, look, it's ready now. And if you want to do e-commerce and other stuff, well, it, it's ready to go. So that's the thing. It's just, in many ways, it's entirely logical because, well, why are we using tech from the 18th century to deliver mail manually um, in the year 2018 to, like, tell autonomous cars where to go? It kind of seems backwards to me. So we just want to become a global standard so everyone understands it and can use it. Yeah. And then there's no need for all these kind of complicated um, and bizarre addresses which really don't work that well. Who, who does uh, standards for this kind of thing? Is there an open GIS I forum? Or? E maybe? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, I think um, some standards just evolved naturally. Yeah. I mean, look, Twitter was a company which said, hey, you can, you can do a tweet. And, and then over the passage of time, it's what um, you know, governments and um, all sorts of organizations choose to be their standard way of, of um, talking about things. Right. Um, and I think that's a good analogy, actually. Like, we, we came up with an idea. Um, but if you just open source it, like some of the other efforts were in the past with these long alphanumeric codes and said, look, I fixed the global addressing problem, um, then it's like, well, fine, but nobody knows it exists. So right, right. I think we'd like to emulate what Twitter have done and slowly 
properly build, be responsible about how the technology is used, make sure it's accessible where it needs to be um, for charitable uses and things like this, um, and but, you know, build it so that seven billion people in the world can use a three-word address awesome. um, and get around. You work with non-Roman alphabets, uh, and do you work with uh, right-to-left alphabets as well? Yeah, we do. We do. Arabic, which is right to left, uh, we do. Um, Mongolian is a pretty good example of a non-Roman alphabet. Um, it's also very difficult. Uh, um, and we've just done Thai. We're doing Hindi at Whoa. the moment. Um, so yeah, it's um, it, yeah. There, there, there isn't really any issue on the language front. But, but the thing which takes time is we have to get forty linguists to g literally <laughs> go through the dictionary one by one right. and say this word is suitable, this word is not suitable. And from having done that when we were very early with no money, I had to spend a long time. I'm looking at the English dictionary, and it's uh, it's not fun work going. Well, you have to words. you have to chew homonyms, for instance, right? Because yeah, th that would be ambiguous. I mean, it's not. I can That's see why it's difficult, especially forty thousand words. That's a fairly large vocabulary. But you know what you've just done, though. You've just created a new gold rush because there are going to be companies looking at this, trying to get the three perfect word words. They want like <laughs> gold, platinum, <laughs> diamond. They're gonna they're gonna be setting up their headquarters in places just, where they can get. I these. just want to say we're moving the Twit Studios to Prudhoe Bay, Alaska, That's where right. twit, 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 twit Twit is, and that will be our new headquarters. Easy to remember. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a great story. Tell us when you do. I will. <laughs> hey, Chris, it's really great to talk to you. And I, I'm thrilled that you came up with this. Uh, and I'm really uh, excited that it's, that it's gaining the momentum it is. And, and Mercedes, really, that's huge. Uh, so you'll get in a Mercedes, in the, talk to the speech system, give it three words, and it will then, the map will then go to where you want to go, basically. Yeah, exactly. Just say, navigate me to table chair spoon. The, the Mercedes will just say, Great, off we amazing. go. That's amazing. I love it. CEO and uh, co founder of What Three Words, what th the number three words.com. Chris, thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure, guys. Thanks for having me. Oh, I appreciate it.